Good morning, everyone. My name is Laura Cocciolillo, and I'm a postgraduate student at Kaposkari University in Venice. And my research is mainly focused on the relationship between art and new technologies, in particular on digital culture and aesthetic of new media. And today I would like to talk about early experiences of galleries in virtual environments, because even if in recent times, especially after the pandemic, online exhibition format seems to have reached a peak, I believe that it's still fundamental to look back at previous experiments that made virtual art spaces a reality in the last two decades. So why is, is um, the digital increasingly reconfiguring the way we display contemporary art? In the contemporary era, we are witnessing a transition from the readability of the image to the playability of the environmental image. And this is reconfiguring our spaces and transposing them in shared virtual environments. And new media system and digital networks have influenced how we experience art and cultural products, inviting us to reconsider the role played by the traditional museum. And Immersive illusion has become extremely efficient in a context of technological development, which allowed a high level of unframingness, which means that the borders of representation are now blurred. The result is that we are able to enter the frame and inhabit the image, and the image is able to overflow the frame and inhabit the world. So images become virtual environments and spectators become players. We, are, we no longer see images, but we play within them and we inhabit them with our avatars. So, um, however, it is not my intention to question whether or not this is enhancing or undermining the traditional institution because I believe that questioning the relationship between museums and online platforms reveals the assumption that real and virtual are two opposite conditions, while there are actually two sides of the same coin. So do the virtual need the real or do the real need the virtual? I believe that in the hyper-visual environment that, char that characterizes the contemporary era, one needs the other and vice versa. Rather, the purpose of this presentation is to focus on a simulated virtual environment that since nearly two decades and has demonstrated to be a privileged arena for experimenting with fully fluid, fluid and malleable possibilities for exhibitions build without the physical rules of the off world. So to do that, I will be tracing the history of one of the most interesting exhibition venue in uh, a virtual environment. That is uh, Art Virtual Gallery, and uh, that is a new media center located primarily in the synthetic world of Second Life. So Second Life is a multi-user virtual environment launched in June 23rd, 2003 um, by Linden Love, um, soon considered by artists as a stage to freely perform without physical consequences. So Second Life was conceived by its founder, Philip Rosedale, with the aim of reaching a coexistence of two words. And I quote, the real word and the global, highly realistic and online space called the metaverse, end quote. So I believe that this testifies how this term was a thing way before Zuckerberg launched it in 2021. Um, so for this presentation, I'd like to focus on two exhibitions displayed by in Ars Virtua in 2006 that are both connected by the red thread of the discovery of identity. So the first one is uh, 13 Most Beautiful Avatars, uh, in which the artist duo Eva and Franco Mattis um, captured the most visually dynamic and celebrated stars of Second Life. And why 
is this exhibition so relevant? Because it investigates the role of virtual environment in reorienting identity and self-perception through the function of the avatar. So as many of you probably know, the avatar is a deputy of the player self in the virtual world, and its origins are rooted in the philosophical concepts of the double, the alter ego, and the doppelganger. And the deep link between the player self and the avatar allow us to define a new kind of subjectivity, that is the avatar subjectivity. And according to artists Eva and, Frank, Eva and Franco Mattis, avatars are self-portraits. And the fascinating aspect of Second Life is that it could be considered an identity factory. So 13 Most Beautiful Avatars displays portraits, a collection of printed photos they took of avatars in Second Life. And the series was shown for the first time in Art Speed but later, and here you see the opening in Art Speed in November uh, 15th. Um, and the second exhibition was, was later reconstructed, physically, physically reconstructed at the Italian Academic of uh, and the, the Italian Academy of Columbia University of New York and then at the Postmaster Gallery in New York, and you see here, um, and there the printed portraits, um, the, mm, the was, uh, the, the, they were exhibited there. And additionally, uh, there was a, sc a screen showing the virtual venue of the exhibition in Second Life. And so uh, here you see uh, um, that the picture, uh, you see a picture taken during the exhibition. And as you see, the setup is pretty similar to the one in Second Life. So um, Eva Franco Mattes generates in the viewer a sense of ambiguity given by creating a sort of parallel, parallel reality uh, that is built through performances that blur the boundaries between the real and the virtual, playing with real and fictional identities at the point that one becomes the other and vice versa. So their decision of working on portraits of avatars uh, reflects, the, um, reflects on the concept of self on multiple layers. So first of all, as noted by Domenico Quaranta, um, the image of the avatar raises more, as, as the image of the avatar raises more popularity, more popularity of the user uh, that made the avatar, uh, the image almost prevails on that person. And the avatar is almost bring to life by its interaction in the, in, in word that sometimes, so uh, that, that means inside the word of second life, that sometimes overflow in the off word, so the real word. And the importance of portraits, the series portraits, lies in the fact that um, the series witness to the gradual uh, humanization of our uh, our digital and virtual identities, which for even Franco Mattes was already an inevitable, an inevitable drift um, back in 2006. So the next example is Honesty is Our Policy, our show opened in September 8th, 2006, and created by the di directors uh, of uh, the pioneering net art organization Turbulence.org, so James Morgan, Amy Wilson, and Jay Van Buren. And the exhibition is centered uh, on the notion of honesty um, and how its value changes in the off word and in the in word. So when you're, when you're inside, uh, second life and when when you're outside in the real life, in the real world. So um, I'd like to start quoting this um, 
uh, quoting Gammy Wilson, um, who says, honestly, may seem like a okay notion in real life, but in an environment like Second Life, honesty is all you have. Absent social cue, history, nature, all one has to go on is uh, all one has to go on is the trust in uh, another that is uh, that this is how they view reality and to interact with, with uh, anyone on a meaningful level that version of reality but must be accepted so what does it mean um we are once again addressing the topic of identity or rather how you can fake identity online and um, in 2006, we were facing the fact that the internet was giving us the opportunity to connect to complete strangers that were using customized images of themselves to, to present, to show to us. So yes, we had the opportunity to experience another form of reality, but on the other side, we are somehow allowed to hide our offline identities. So everybody in, in a virtual environment is doing this. And to make it work, we must blindly trust that version of reality. And this is the uncanny side, uncanny side of simulation. Because the avatar is at the same time a mask and an identity. And the internet just feeds our innate desire to fear the unknown. Uh, so this exhibition features, featured works by Cory Archangel, Nicholas Klaus and David Crawford. Mm, and in a lie, I'd like to, to show you the, uh, the work from the latter as I conclude my presentation. So this is a steal from David Cratford Stop Motion Studies. That is a 2003 commission of new radio and performing arts uh, for its turbulence website. And it was made possible by a grant for, from the L L LF Foundation. Um, so this work addresses two main issues. On one side, mm, communication, and on the other side, how we react, uh, react to strangers. So communication is here addressed in an unconscious and non-verbal form as body language becomes the main topic of craftful pictures. Indeed, the artist took photos, um, photo portraits of strangers in Tokyo's subway and, uh, and he captured their physical reaction. So the artist sees the subway as an environment in which, um, and I quote, social dynamics and individual behavior are increasingly mediated by digital technology, end quote. So this leads to a comparison between the off-world environment of the subway and the in-work context of Second Life and more generally uh, of the internet. And um, as well as the internet does, subways uh, bring people from, from a wide range of social and cultural, cultural background into close context, contact and Yet the, the, the relationship with stranger in the half word and in the in word is different. So uh, to conclude, what was absolutely innovative about Arts Virtua was that it was, it was not trying to bring the new media audience into the traditional museum or gallery. They were not trying to flash out the internet community from their rooms and draw them into the white cube. Whether they, they brought out audience into new media, into an, a sort of unca an uncanny journey through internet subculture, through fetishism, through new modalities to construct identities. And in doing so, they gave the audience a body to interact with 
one another within the space. So this is not merely a remediation of physical space or um, or a traditional or of a traditional artwork inside a virtual environment. On the contrary, uh, as we saw, for example, with 13 most beautiful avatar, often the virtual the virtual over, over sorry overflow in the physical world causing uh, causing remediation of virtual exhibition in the real world. So it's not a remediation of the virtual into the real, but sometimes it happens that virtual are re remed remediated into the real. So the strength of our virtual is to showcase um, new media artworks in their native context and being consistent on, I believe, two sides. So on one hand, uh, this way of exhibiting digital art is coherent in the context. And on the other hand, on the content. So it's coherent to the context uh, because uh, it's, it's coherent with the, with the context in which the artwork is usually generated from. And on the other hand, it's coherent with its content because both artworks and exhibition are often tautological as they speak of them they speak of themselves and their context and their context at the same time exploring themes of identity and interactions in virtual world while being exhibited in a virtual world so here I conclude my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and thanks. Thanks for watching.